what, what an idea this is just to have scales all of a sudden. It's almost like the, the absence of an idea and making a point of that. Well, I, I think immediately of the minimalists. Um, uh -huh. And in fact, when I arrived at the Wistar Museum in 1974 as assistant curator before director, I, um, we were acquiring a lot of work by them and the conceptual artists, which is really reducing things to a basic idea, a concept, or, and as you say, focusing on just the elements that make up a picture, mm. but not necessarily painting a uh, an illusion of reality or something, like a landscape, but just those elements, color, form, shape. And you can imagine, an artist gets really excited about that. Like you get excited about sound. The visual artist is just, he doesn't have to have the, the tree with all the leaves on it. He just, maybe the color green, mm. you know, or, or it just wallows in just one shade of that green. For the sake uh, of it. For the sake of it, exactly. Or the line, or the shape. Mm. Um, as you can imagine, it's not everyone's cup of tea also. And Did you find that at the museum that sometimes uh, visitors had trouble with that kind of art? <laughs> you can imagine, yes. <laughs> Always, or my child could do this, but does my child do this? Uh, <laughs> you know, it, and maybe a child does because a child loves the basic, you know, when we're younger we just love color and shape and we don't necessarily paint pictures. Um, so maybe that's a good <laughs> comment. If one has a certain expectation, they might be disappointed. The Sonata revels in, in the idea, almost the simplicity of the idea. Yeah, the idea is the machine that makes the art. I also think of um, Saul LeWitt, because yeah. um, he's a conceptual artist and uh, he's famous for sending out directions to do his works. And I had the pleasure of putting one of them on the wall at the Worcester Art Museum. That's this, uh, uh, uh... Oh, you have that picture. <laughs> oh, how convenient. <laughs> Google's a funny thing. Huh? Um, yeah, yeah, that's back in 1975, the year after I arrived at the museum, and we were doing a show from the Museum of Modern Art, and the directions came, and the director said, does anyone here would like to do it? And I said, I'd love to, because I had always been an artist. And, um, and so the directions were quite simple. To do four boxes in pencil on a white wall, the boxes had to be the same size, and then on the first box, one line, the second box, uh, 10 lines, the third, 100, and the last, 1,000. 1,000, okay. Now that was okay until I also read that th the lines could be not longer than the side of the box. And at first I started out and did a, a curry line. Well, that was, you know, I could see- Too free. How, too free, but I wanted to be free and creative. Uh -huh. um, but then I thought, I'll never be able to measure a thousand. I could, but it would be months and the show would be opening and the work wouldn't be done. So I decided I'm going to do straight lines, because straight lines can be beautiful too, but it already, mm. um, what shall I say, put demands on me. Um, and I saw how the artist was controlling me, not so differently than Beethoven's notes um, are controlling you. At the same time, I had to make some decisions, and you're making decisions. Uh, you're not Beethoven. I know you work very hard to interpret Beethoven, but you're Adam Golka in the 21st century. Back then I was Jim Wallou in the 20th century. And so it's an interesting parallel, I think, to conceptual minimal art.